Hello Year 3, it's Miss Emmanuel here. How are you all? Uh, welcome to our writing for this week. Uh, we have a new piece of writing to do which I think you'll all enjoy. Uh, before I tell you what it is, let's look at the I can. Today it is I can explore a text as a writer. Often we start with exploring a text as a reader, but I would like you to look today at the text uh, and think of its structure and the language before we move on in the next two lessons to looking at um, responding as a reader to the sort of ideas and themes of a text. So here's our writing journey, just uh, five lessons. Um, the second and third lessons you'll see are the same thing um, and that will become clear when we come on to that. So for today we're going to explore as a writer. Let's establish what we're doing. What are we doing? We're doing a comparison of two characters. Who's it for? Well, we're going to share it on our Year 3 newsletter, uh, those ones that you send in. And why are we doing it? Well, we're going to understand how characters can have similarities and differences. Characters are often quite subtle, aren't they? Some characters are similar to others and at the same time have differences. Um, not every character is completely different. Some people are a little bit alike, but different. Um, in other ways. The steps to success. I can explore a text as a writer. I can identify the structure of a text. I can identify key language for comparing and contrasting and I can use key language for comparing and contrasting. So we're learning to identify the language and using it ourselves. Here's our vocab lab to start and what I would like you to do is I would like you to uh, match the word to its definition. So here we have on the left some words in red, misery, horn-rimmed, refreshments, accusingly, grimace, anxious, torment, unsmiling. And I would like you to match them to a list of definitions. We have worried, ugly twisted look on someone's face, not smiling, cause suffering, glass is made from horn, feeling unhappy, a light snack or drink, claiming that someone has done something wrong. So match them up, see if you can, use your finger um, if you want to on your computer screen. Maybe start with the ones that are easiest and work um, along from there, the ones that are more tricky. So pause the video and have a go at that now please. How did you get on? Okay, let's have a look. The first one that I thought would be quite easy to do would be to join unsmiling with not smiling there. Look, we've got a prefix un means uh, not essentially. So not smiling. Uh, other simple ones I thought refreshments, you may or may not have known are a light snack or drink. Um, horn rimmed glasses. Well, there's the word horn, look over here. So we can assume that that's glass is made from horn. Sometimes like the frame can be made from horn, particularly with older glasses. Um, misery is a bit tricky at the moment. I'm going to leave that one. Accusingly, if we accuse someone of something, we might claim that someone has done something wrong. Grimace, if you grimace, you might show an ugly, twisted look on your face, an ugly twisted look on someone's face. If you're anxious, you might be worried. If you torment someone, um, or someone is tormented, it means you might cause suffering. Okay, so if you torment them, make them feel sad or unhappy. So then the last one we've got is misery misery, feeling very unhappy. If you're miserable, you feel very unhappy. There you go. I wonder how you got on. So those words are going to appear in our waggle for the day. Here's our waggle. Here's our character comparison. You might recognise these two ladies over here. They're from a well-known book by Roald Dahl. I'll read you the waggle, see if you can recognise them. Here we go. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were two sisters who lived together in a small house. Both women had small beady eyes that stared accusingly at poor James. Aunt Sponge had a small, unsmiling mouth and she tutted whenever she was unhappy, which was most of the time. Similarly, Aunt Spiker never managed to smile and was more likely to grimace at anyone who came too near. 
Aunt Sponge wore her hair tied up in a too small bow right on the top of her head, in the same way that Aunt Spiker tied hers. Aunt Sponge always wore a dress and high heels the same as Aunt Spiker. In every other way, the two women looked completely different. Aunt Sponge was extremely large and very, very short. In contrast, Aunt Spiker was as thin as a rake and incredibly tall. She wore horn-rimmed glasses on the end of her long pointed nose, whereas Aunt Spicer, or Aunt Spiker, it was a mistake there, had X-ray vision and wouldn't have been able to balance her glasses on her short blobby nose. Oh, actually that last one there should have been Aunt Sponge, shouldn't it? Aunt Sponge, she's the one with the short blobby nose. Right, there's a second paragraph here. Like Aunt Spiker, Aunt Sponge was a cruel and unpleasant person. She often poked James with a stick when he wouldn't do as she asked and thoroughly enjoyed seeing him cry. Aunt, Spike, like Aunt Spiker liked to torment James too. On a hot June day, she enjoyed sipping her ice cold lemonade while he worked 12 hours straight in the sunshine without any refreshment. However, their personalities did differ a bit. Aunt Sponge was very confident and thought she knew everything about everything. Although it was really Aunt Spiker who was the brains of the family, she really knew how to make James's life a misery. Aunt Sponge never worried about anything because she was too dim to know when there was a problem. On the other hand, Aunt Spiker was constantly anxious because she wanted to make sure that their lives were as comfortable and lazy as she possibly could. Okay, so that's your character comparison about Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. I wonder if you've remembered which book they're from. They're from James and the Giant Peach, aren't they? So first of all, we're going to look at the structure of our waggle. The structure here. That's how it's organised on the page. What is the first paragraph about and what's the second paragraph about? See if you can see any difference. We have looked at character before and actually this is organised in the same sort of way. So that gives you a little bit of a clue. Pause the video, have a think, make some notes, talk to someone if there's someone with you, tell me about, think about the structure of this waggle. Okay, how did you get on with that? Well, there are two paragraphs, as I said. The first par paragraph looks at things like their beady eyes, their mouths, um, how they tie their hair, their dresses and heels, um, the fact that Aunt Sponge is large and short and Aunt Spiker is thin and tall the glasses, their noses, all those sorts of things. So if we put all that together, that's very much about their appearance, isn't it? Their appearance, how they look. The second paragraph um, talks about them being cruel and unpleasant, uh, tormenting James. Um, one is confident, the other is a warrior. Um, so that's more about their personalities. Yes, we've done that before when we've done descriptions of characters. We've talked about appearance, how they look, and personality. You can think of that as what you can see on the outside, the external traits, and what is happening on the inside, the internal traits or, or personality. So that's internal, inside. Okay, so we've got personality, uh, appearance first, then personality. Both of them now, because this is a character description, both of them talk about, both paragraphs talk about both of the women, don't they? So they compare them. They look at how they are the same and how they are different. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Ah, might be helpful to do it when we've got it all on one page. So again, pause the video. Can you find that language of comparison and the language of different. Have a look through, it might take you a little bit longer here. I'll give you a clue, there are five words in the top paragraph, or words or phrases, and five in the second paragraph. Pause, and let's see if you can find that language. How did you get on? Let's have a look what we've found. So, 
Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were two sisters who lived together in a small house. We've got here both women. That shows you're comparing. Both of them had small beady eyes. Aunt Sponge had a small unsmiling mouth, which she tutted whenever she was unhappy. Similarly, here we go, a word for comparing, sort of saying that she's Aunt Spiker is the same. She never managed to smile and was more likely to grimace. Aunt Spiker tied her hair up in a too small bow. In the same way, here we go, we're comparing again there. So Aunt Spiker, in the same way that Aunt Spiker had hers. Aunt Sponge always wore a dress and high heels, the same as Aunt Spiker. There we are, another comparison. Oh, actually, I think there's six in this first paragraph. So that's saying that all these are showing how they are the same. In every other way, the two women looked completely different. Right. Aunt Sponge was extremely large and very, very short. In contrast, right, I'm going to use a different colour highlighter here to help you with this. So this is the contrasting phrases. In contrast, Aunt Spiker was as thin as a rake and very tall. She wore horn rimmed glasses at the end of her long pointed nose, whereas Aunt Spiker had x-ray vision and wouldn't have been able to balance glasses. So they're different. Different shapes. One has glasses, one doesn't. So all the yellow words are where they're the same comparison vocabulary. The others are contrasting. Let's have a look at the second paragraph. I'm going to need our yellow first. So, like Aunt Spiker, so just like Aunt Spiker, Aunt Sponge was a cruel and unpleasant person. She often poked him with a stick, blah, blah, blah. Aunt Spiker liked to torment James too. That means she did the same thing as her sister. On a hot day, she enjoyed sipping a lemonade while he worked 12 hours. However, their personalities did differ a bit. Aunt Sponge was very comfortable though she knew th and thought she knew everything about everything. Although, here we go, although, this is a word saying a bit like but, although it was really Aunt Spiker who was the brains. So Aunt Sponge thought she knew everything, but Aunt Spiker was the clever one really. So that's a contrast between the characters. Aunt Sponge never worried about anything because she was too dim to know when there was a problem. On the other hand, Aunt Spiker was constantly anxious, etc. I wonder, we can probably also use a however. Can we? Hmm. No, let's not use that. Can't take that off now, but ignore that one. So we've got lots of ways. Vocabulary for comparing, vocabulary for contrasting. Now, what I'd like you to do is compare and contrast these two cups, mugs, um, drinking vessels, let's call them that. Let's write a short paragraph saying what is the same, compare, and what is different, contrast, about these two cups. Use some of these words and phrases to help. Here we go, I've put the words up here for you again. So let me help you uh, start off. So they're similar, aren't they? There's some things that are the same and some things that are different. And don't forget, when you talk about two things, you have to compare them, say what's the same, what's different, and talk about them both. For example, you might say, um, both of these cups are green. The cup on the left is um, lime green and the cup on the right is moss green. Let's use something else. Uh, similarly, uh, the lime green cup is used for drinking out of. Similarly, the moss green cup is used for drinking out of. If you wanted to then think about how they're different, you could say the lime green cup is mainly used for cold drinks, unlike the moss green cup, which is used for hot drinks. The moss green cup has a lid. In contrast, the lime green cup does not have a lid. Okay, do you get the idea? What's the same? What's the different? Talk about both of the cups. 
How have you got on with that? I wonder. Here's your steps to success. Let's see if you've been able to achieve this during the lesson. I can explore a text as a writer. Yes, we've done that. I can identify the structure of the text. Well, we've done that. I can identify key language for comparing and contrasting and I can use key language for comparing and contrasting. Hopefully writing about those cups, you'll have had a chance to do that. Thank you, Year 3. Please send your completed work in to us via email at year 3 at brindleyacademy.com. We do really love to see your work and enjoy reading it. So very well done and I'll speak to you again soon.